Many scientists have posed the question, if we were to discover non-terrestrial or extra-dimensional life, would we even be able to recognize it as life? All life as we know it is carbon-based, and as such, even when imagining fantastical alien species, they reflect the physiological structures similar to the human and animal life we are familiar with. While silicone and nitrogen-based life has been speculated to exist by scientists, within control we encounter something even more exotic than this. Polaris and the Hiss are two resonance-based entities that are the focal point of Control's conflict. They are vibrations, conscious entities made of sound and energy. As such, in order to understand them, we need to understand some basics of auditory physics. Any wavelength of sound is classified by three primary factors, that is frequency, amplitude, and timbre. Waves oscillate meaning that they swing up and down in a specific pattern like a pendulum. The number of oscillations per second or length of the wave is the frequency. This is responsible for the pitch of the sound or the color in the case of wavelengths of light. Amplitude deals with the amount of energy in the sound wave and can be visualized by how high the oscillation goes. The higher the amplitude, the louder the sound becomes, and the lower the amplitude, the quieter it becomes. Timbre is the quality of the sound. Even if the frequency and amplitude of a wave are identical, the timbre can be different, such as when listening to a piano play middle C versus an electric guitar playing the same note. While there are various definitions of resonance, the one I want to focus on is the intensification and enriching of a musical tone by a supplementary vibration. What this means is that when two sounds that vibrate at the same frequency are present, the waves resonate with one another and the amplitude of the sound is increased. Think of the last time you were singing along to your favorite song. When you hit the note perfectly in tune with the singer, you can feel your voice resonate with the music. This sensation is the increase in energy of the sound wave. Now, there is another few concepts I want to cover before returning back to Polaris and the Hiss. All matter in the universe is in constant motion and vibrates at a specific rate. This is known as the object's natural or resonant frequency. For example, the low E string on a guitar has the natural frequency of 82 Hz, while the top E string vibrates at 330 Hz. Even when the string is not plucked and is at rest, it has the same natural frequency. Without touching it, we can make the string vibrate by striking a tuning fork that has the same resonant frequency. When a sound wave hits the object that has the same natural frequency, it causes it to vibrate more violently. This can be seen when glass shatters from an opera singer. This is due to the amplitude of the vibration growing so strong the molecules are unable to hold together and it tears itself apart. Now, when two sounds are present at the same time, there are three primary relationships that can happen between them. That is, to resonate with one another, to be dissonant with one another, or to cancel out one another. When two sounds of the same frequency that are in sync are exposed to one another, they resonate just like the glass and increase in amplitude. This principle can be seen when tuning your car radio to a specific frequency. It resonates with the radio waves around us and amplifies them enough to be heard. Dissonance is experienced when the frequency of the tone is slightly longer or shorter than the other. As a result, they produce a very uncomfortable sound to listen to. In musical terms, this creates a desire for one of the tones to resolve into consonants. Consonance is a more pleasant relationship between the two notes as opposed to dissonance. Two notes can also cancel out one another. This occurs when two waves that are 180 degrees out of phase hit one another. Imagine two ocean waves crashing into one another and canceling each other out. This principle is the basis for noise canceling headphones. With these basic terms out of the way, let's return to control. As the Polaris and Hiss resonance have clashed before, we can consider them to be polar opposites. In a poetic sense, this makes them literally 180 degrees diametrically opposed to one another. As discussed, when two tones of similar wavelengths that are 180 degrees out of phase clash, they cancel out one another. 
This is what allows the Polaris resonance to act as protection from the hiss. This is made further possible by the Hedron resonance amplifiers developed by Dr. Darling. As the name suggests, the HR rays are intended to increase the amplitude or energy of Polaris and allow it to broadcast where these devices are located. The hiss does something similar and uses hiss agents that float around and chant the poem endlessly to achieve this end. These corrupted agents act as relay stations and spreads the hiss deeper into the oldest house. With hundreds if not thousands of voices chanting the same thing with the same frequency, the amplitude of their hiss resonance is increased. As more hiss agents are corrupted and lend their voices to the poem, the hiss grows in power and energy until nothing is left standing. So what are some differences between the two? Let's look at the concepts of timbre and dissonance for one answer. Timbre is the quality of the sound, so let's tackle that one first. Simply put, this goes down to the reaction to the resonance as seen by characters who come into contact with them. For the hiss, we see Dylan, Trench, and an untold number of FBC agents. Trench lost his mind, being shown so much at once that his mind couldn't keep up with it. The various agents were twisted beyond all recognition, mentally and physically. Dylan was left with a psyche in shambles, collapsing into a coma once he was cleansed. The quality of this could be considered a negative one. A sound that creates madness, a manic tone that consumes the host. On the opposite end of the spectrum, Polaris is a softer tone. It lingers in the background of the mind and is not intrusive. In the case of Dr. Darling, it released information to him over a period of time in the form of lessons, as he put it. For Jessie, half the time she didn't even know it was there. There was no madness associated with it and gave the ability to perceive reality a little differently. The sound of Polaris was more pleasing to the ears, while the hiss was more violent in timbre. As mentioned earlier, all matter in the universe vibrates at a natural frequency. This includes human beings. As such, the primary frequency of these resonance-based entities can either have consonance with the human or dissonance. Consonance is when two tones resonate with a pleasing tone, and dissonance is when their relationship is severely unpleasant. In this situation, much like in music, the dissonant relationship strives for resolution into a consonant one. This dynamic works for music, personal disagreements, and even how two individuals coexist. Polaris and the Hiss do this in different ways. Polaris effectively alters itself to match the frequency of the listener, leaving them mostly unchanged. The Hiss, however, forces the listener to change to its frequency, altering their mind until they are merely drones. Much of the Hiss chant refers to giving up aspects of the self to the new song that consumes their entire being. Phrases such as, repeat the word, the name of the sound, it resonates in your house. An earworm is a tune you can't stop humming in a dream. These lines have themes of being consumed by the will of another song, another resonance other than your own. Just like with dissonance, trying to resist this is difficult. One strives for resolution. Since the hiss will never budge, we are forced to tune ourselves to it, or go insane. Dylan even states, it feels good to say those words. The difference between the two entities is reflected in the freedom of the psyche with Polaris versus the enslavement of the psyche with the hiss. While not a conscious being, we do in fact have a version of a primary background resonance here on Earth. It is called the Schumann Resonance. This electromagnetic field of the Earth that exists in the cavity between the planet and the ionosphere has an average frequency of 7.83 Hz. This is effectively the natural frequency of the Earth. For the human mind, we have several tiers of natural frequency as well. On average, the brain resonates around 10 Hz. This falls within alpha wave patterns. Let's take a brief moment to look at this. For the human mind, delta waves exist between 0.5 and 4 Hz and are characterized by deep, dreamless sleep or when unconscious. Theta waves are between 4 and 7 Hz and are characterized by drowsiness, the first stage of sleep or meditation. It is associated with daydreaming, intuition, and creativity. 
Alpha waves reside between 7 and 12 Hz and is the common state of a conscious, relaxed adult. It is characterized by alertness, but not actively processing information. Moving up, beta waves are shown between 12 and 30 Hz and reflect active outward attention, mental activity, and information processing. On the higher end of the spectrum, the mind may experience a sense of heightened alertness, anxiety, or the fight or flight response. The final primary type are gamma waves between 30 and 100 Hz. This occurs when we are processing information from both hemispheres of our brain simultaneously. To quote from an article called Schumann Resonances and Their Effect on Human Bioregulation, Entrainment is the process whereby two interacting oscillating systems, which have different periods when they function independently, assume a common period. The system with the greater frequency slows down and the other speeds up. In other words, one vibrational frequency can tune the other, train it into harmony. This is shown in control when Polaris goes through the entrainment process with Jesse and Dr. Darling, while the Hiss does the same with Trench and Dylan. Polaris tunes itself down in order to safely tune up the director and the head of research. This gives them an enhanced perspective of reality. The Hiss's entrainment process is more violent, as it does not tune itself down, but forces everything to its level. The human mind is not capable of that level of brain function, and leads to madness or the destruction of the psyche, effectively making all those corrupted by the Hiss mere puppets, part of the collective. Dr. Darling refers to the Hiss as viral and invasive, while Polaris is benign. It is theorized that higher frequencies allow for more information to be received. For example, at 20 Hz, you have access to information from 0 to 20. But at 100 Hz, one has access to information from 0 to 100. Dr. Darling's story reflects this theory, as he gains a better understanding of things with each lesson Hedron releases to him. With each lesson, his psyche is effectively tuned up to a higher frequency. Eventually, he ceases to exist here and ascends to a higher plane of consciousness. With all this in mind, what is the true story of these two entities? This is a personal theory of mine and my best guess given the information we have available. Let me know your thoughts on the matter. At some point in the past, the Hiss escaped from its home threshold in the burned slide and invaded the hand. Hedron became the conduit for Polaris's resonance. The Hiss consumed all forms of life in the hand, turning them into relay stations for its frequency. The amplitude of the Hiss grew stronger as the voices resonated with one another. Hedron and Polaris were unable to cancel it out fully, with only Hedron broadcasting the benign resonance. As Polaris refused to be viral and assume control of others, the five pillars witnessed during the Slidescape 36 expeditions were crafted. Effectively, these were giant tuning forks that amplified the Polaris resonance enough to beat back the Hiss. The gate to the Hiss's home threshold was shut off, and only lingering remnants of that resonance remained. When two residents of Ordinary, Jesse and Dylan Faden, arrived in the hand, either Hedron or Polaris reached out to them. Recognizing the young pair utilitarians, it found potential conduits for itself if the need arose. Calling them special, it began the entrainment process. As a result, Polaris remained with them even after they left, although the amplitude was low. After this event, Dylan was captured by the Bureau and brought back to the oldest house, while Jesse escaped. Much later, during the Slightscape expeditions, the lingering remnants of the Hiss found their way into Trench's ear and followed him back to the oldest house. On the third expedition, Darling brought the Hedron back to the Bureau. As it was the conduit for Polaris, this resonance came as well. The influence of the Hiss's entrainment led to anxiety and paranoia in the former director. Sensing the threat, Hedron released lessons to Darling and instructed him to make the HRAs in preparation. These would serve as smaller versions of the giant tuning forks it used in the past. The Hiss's grip over Trent grew to the point where the need to defend the Bureau from Polaris, a non-existent threat, reached the breaking point. He took the slide projector down to the nostalgia department and opened a gate to the burnt slide threshold. Being the home threshold of the Hiss, that viral resonance invaded full force into the Bureau. Anyone not protected by an HRA or the Polaris resonance was consumed. 
This began the struggle for the hiss to increase its amplitude or power to the point where it could beat back Polaris. It achieved this by creating hiss agents to act as relay stations, and soldiers to destroy anyone with an HRA that broadcasted Polaris. As each HRA was destroyed, one less voice could resonate and the amplitude of the benign entity decreased. As a secondary goal, the Hiss discovered the astral plane and the board. This group of entities became a target to entrain as well. Sensing the danger before it happened, Hedron reached out to Jesse and called her to the oldest house just in time for the previous director to seemingly commit suicide. The final goal of the Hiss is to destroy Hedron, the conduit that allows the Polaris Resonance to exist here. Throughout this, Dylan Faden rejects Polaris as he feels betrayed for being locked up and abandoned. He accepts the Hiss in, and any trace of Polaris within him is diminished. Using his body, the Hiss tricks Jesse into removing the large-scale HRA that protects Hedron, and watches as the conduit is destroyed. With no source to broadcast Polaris' signal, all of the HRAs fail and the Bureau is consumed in full. Once corrupted, Jesse's consciousness is thrust into a mindscape that keeps her psyche trapped. With the encouragement of Ati and Dr. Darling, she is able to locate the remnant of Polaris that she has had since childhood. In doing so, she becomes the new conduit for this resonance, becoming the successor to Hedron. Every HRA reactivates, curing the survivor still wearing one of the infection. As her own body is now capable of canceling out the hiss, Jessie enters the nostalgia department, cleanses Dylan and the Black Pyramid before closing the slide projector. This cuts off the source of the hiss resonance. Now, all that is left to do is clean house, to eliminate any trace of the hiss that still remains trapped on this side. This brings us to the end of the main campaign of Control. In the end, these two resonance-based life forms represent themes of free will versus control, agency of one's own psyche through Polaris versus the force that wants to tune us to sing only their song with the hiss. In the Foundation DLC, we learn a little more about the capabilities of Polaris. When Jessie thinks to herself that she wishes Pope were there, Polaris sends a message directly to the new head of research, who begins making the trip down. I could really use my head of research right about now. In addition, the X-ray light box allows Jesse to forcibly entrain the Hiss enemy, tuning it to the frequency of Polaris and under her control. Much like the Hiss entrainment, this causes psychic trauma which eventually kills the host. With a new DLC coming soon, I am curious what new information we may receive. See you then.